in this video, we're going to take a quick look at how to filter by two inputs. So we're going to take a look at how to filter a table by two inputs. So let's create a thing. So let's be the name of our thing. And then I'm just going to quick copy control. I'm choosing control C, control V on here. This will also be the title of our thing. I'm just going to do name of thing. And then um, feature one. Feature two. All right. Um, let's make feature two a number. Um, and actually, let's separate these out a little bit. Let's make feature two a number. Let's make feature one something less like this. Let's make feature one a, a drag down. Let's do a drop down. Let's do it as a color. I'll show you a few different things with that too. Static choices, static choices will be fine. Placeholder. Feature one, color. Let's do red, blue, green. I like blue. Blue is a good color. A space after blue. Good. All right, so now I have a thing. Okay, I have feature one and I have feature two. In this one, because it's a number, I want to dictate that it is going to be a number. So I want to go here and make an integer, which will make it so it's always going to be only a number that can go into here. It's going to be important for later when I am actually creating the data. So here, create thing, start an edit workflow, data, create a new thing. Create a new thing. To data filter thing. Okay, so title, the text. Oops, don't need to title. I need to new will be feature one, which was color. And feature two, which was going to be number, which remember was a number. Okay. So, which is the input name of thing, it's value, and feature one will be the input feature one's colors value. Number will be input feature two's value. Okay. So. Now we can just do reset relevant inputs. So now what we can do with this is all we can do is create a series of things. Okay, so let's create a table. To do that, we are going to use a repeating group. We're going to make a repeating group here. And I'll change this to a higher number of rows. Type of content will be two data. I'll call it filler thing, not filter thing on accident. Um, data source will be do a search for to do that filler thing and we don't actually need to really do it because do a filter here we're just going to grab all of them for now okay so right now we're just going to take a look at literally all of them all right and this is going to be filler things title okay copy paste drag it next to it and change it from title to feature one and I'll change it from feature one to number. Okay. I'm gonna click preview. So in this preview here, what we're going to see is that I'm gonna type in the name of the thing. So the thing one, then the color is going to be red and the feature number two is gonna be one. Okay. Two. In the future, two. Okay, so maybe I want three is red with a one. Great. Let's do a few different reds. Or blue five one six a green. And a one. Great. So now 
you can see I have a small pool of data. I've got a couple reds, a couple blues, a couple ones, a couple twos. It's like Dr. Seuss. Um, let's create some filters. So if I want to filter this, I have to decide first off how I want to filter this data. Um, I can do that with conditionals. So say I want to first off say I want to filter this based on the name of the thing. I can do a input here. And I could uh, create a filter for that. But actually, sorry, that's not this video. This video is how to filter by two specific inputs, right? So the, how to filter this by two inputs, we're going to take a quick look here. We're going to say, what two inputs do we want to filter by, right? So we want to find all of these down here, all the things that would have two of the same inputs. So in this case, we're going to look for all the ones that are going to have the same color and the same number, right? So I'm going to quick copy these two just so I don't have to go through the remaking them. See, this one is a drop down color. Um, filter, I'm going to put filter in front of these. Okay, now I'm going to go to conditional here, right? So I go to conditional. So now when filter drop down colors value is not oops is not empty all right so when this is not empty something happens all right so what i'm saying here for this table to do is to pull data differently when something specific happens, right? So essentially, if this changes to blue, this table knows that this isn't pulling up its default, all right? So this is defaulting as feature color, feature one color, right? If it doesn't default to that, if it has any other value in it, it's going to default to a different search parameter now, all right? It's going to change or it's going to change a property we can define what that property is so like we can change the data source we can change the background change whatever we want all right in this case we're going to change the data source so we're going to do a search and it's going to do a search for the dat this data based on the filter so we're going to do a search for the type of data we've decided which is the two data filler thing that we created for this and we're going to do feature one equals the filter drop down features colors value and then number equal filters number two's value All right so if i do that and then i do preview All right, so i have all this data right here right but then once i start doing this I pull up all the ones that are red and one. Then I can do all the ones that are blue and one, or blue and two, or green and one. And that gives me the ability then to start pulling different bits of data out. Now, what that helps with is, say I have a group of data and I'm trying to find uh, from 300 items, I have to go through 300 items, I've got 17 attributes, and I want to figure out which of these 100 items actually fits a profile for me, right? Having something like this setup actually gives me the ability to go in and then dictate, okay, these are the parameters I want to do, pull them all up in a list, and then I could have in my solution set up. So like each one of these could be set up as a link to like a page so like this thing one could be I could click on it it could send that data to a page and I could then view that data on that page and manipulate that data change that data uh, maybe put a purchase order in on that data um, something to that effect or view that data and no or maybe I'm doing sales orders and I want to make sure that I'm selling the right amount of 
product to a customer. So I'm in this and I'm saying, all right, these are the things that I have. These are the colors. These are the, um, this is the uh, SKU number. And then maybe right over here on the side where my mouse is, I have like an inventory number, right? This is the amount we have left remaining that I can sell. So before I go put in a um, purchase order for it, I'm going to do a quick look. And I'm going to say, do we have red two thing for red two? We have maybe a hundred of them and I need to sell 105. So I know I need to tell the customer, look, we only can sell you a hundred. You know, things like that makes the ability to do this very useful. And uh, you can you can extrapolate this across all kinds of things. So um, this can be used for far more than just these two values. You can use this for um, greater than, less than values, and you can go in and you can just start kind of playing with it and make some really dynamic reporting using this type of stuff. Thanks. Hope this was helpful. Um, if it is, give us a like. Yeah, give us a subscribe, hoping to get to a thousand subscribers. We're at about 800 right now. It's pretty cool. Um, just started making these for fun one day, and it looks like people have uh, enjoyed them. They get a good amount of views. So if, uh, if you enjoyed it and you liked it, please give a, a thumbs up and a, and a subscription cause, or, a, or a follow or whatever it's called. Appreciate that. Thank you. And now uh, have a great day.